What is going on everyone? Welcome back to our New York Jets franchise mode. In this one we are taking on the Indianapolis Colts at their home stadium in Indianapolis. So three weeks, two away games so far. We are perfect on the road. We actually have a better record on the road than we do at home. And we're going to be taking on these Colts with the new quarterback of Phillip Rivers. Now they also drafted Pittman, a pretty good wide receiver. I went over and looked at the stats. Doesn't look like Pittman's doing too much. And, obvi and really, it's mostly their, their slot guy, Zach Pascal, on the passing attack. And then on the rushing attack, it's Marlon Mack leading the way, not Jonathan Taylor or Hines. But they are definitely a pass-first team. Looking at how they were going, Phillip Rivers right now, six touchdowns, one interception on the season. Really hoping to bounce off bounce off that loss with the San Francisco 49ers come out here pull off a huge win Sam Darnold already warming up with his top receiver Denzel Mims eight reception 100, 123 yards one touchdown in the long of 36 yards last week and he's only getting better he is a top five in receiving yards this entire season but without further ado let's get on into kickoff So here we are, the opening kick to start this game off is away. Now I didn't change the time, I thought eight minutes was, was probably about right. I felt pretty good with eight minutes. Um, I think that's how we're gonna roll from now on unless I, I see that the stats are dipping off and we're getting two unrealistic stats. But here we are, Phillip Rivers on the year, 632 passing yards, six touchdowns, one interception. He's having a great performance with Indianapolis. Indianapolis record as just so you guys know, is also one and one going into this game. So both teams looking to get an above 500 record going into this one. We're actually entering an, uh, probably an easiest stretch for us um, this after this game. I'll show you guys after what I mean. Um, but I'm expecting us for the next couple of weeks to really pull off the, the most wins that we're going to do. I'm actually anticipating that we're going to reach that seven win mark before week 10. Nice little curl route there by T.Y. Hillen, and it seems like Phillip Rivers really snapping the ball quick and just throwing through his receivers. They may, already got pretty good chemistry, I guess, going there as Phillip Rivers is our, I mean, he's a veteran quarterback. What are you going to do? He is a veteran quarterback. He probably knows how some of these guys work. He knows how the league works. He knows. Get the ball in your hands and get it out quick as hell. And there we are swatting that one away as he tries to get over to Pascal there. One for three on the day is him. And he needs to get better. He needs to have a better accuracy than that. Finding his tight end, Jack Doyle, who drops the ball. Unable to complete it there. Now third and ten. As Rivers is going to have to go for a little bit of a medium to deep route here. Looking for someone all the time in the world. Little dump down to his running back, who gets brought down just shy of a first down. And now fourth and one. A gain of nine. As now the Indianapolis Colts are going to have to punt it away. And there is our man Sam Darnold trying to hype up his receivers. Get a little jokes there with Wesco, his fullback, and Crowder, his wide receiver, trying to pump them up, get them am amped up for this first opening drive of the game. Rigoberto Sanchez on to punt for the Colts. <laughs> All right, and the punt is up. Oh, this was not a good punt. Really bad punt there by the Indianapolis punter. Yikes, 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 yikes. That was awful. That was an awful one, boys. But here comes Sam Darnold, 446 passing yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. I'd like to see him throw a couple more touchdowns. And against an Indianapolis defense, I think this could be the start of something great. I'm expecting at least one passing touchdown from Sam Darnold today because I think Le'Veon Bell is going to get a bulk of the touchdown action running it. Um, but I think high side, if Sam Darnold only throws for passing touchdowns and then maybe one rushing touchdown, I think it's going to be three touchdowns for Sam Darnold today, one rushing for Le'Veon Bell as he tries to throw it out to the sideline. That one's swatted away. Third and six now. Darnold dropping back, looking... And the ball is hiked. He's looking for someone. Trying to go downfield. There's the pressure. Check down to Bell. Does he have the first down, though? He does. He picks up the first down just barely there. 
able to get in front of that one. Good for him, buddy. Way to go, Le'Veon Bell. Really fighting for those yardage. That's what we need to see out of everyone here today. We need to see them fighting for those yards and really trying to bounce back and show that they want to be on a winning team. If we are going to have a winning season and prove everyone wrong, this is where it needs to start. It needs to start in Indianapolis, and then we just need to keep the momentum going week in and week out. We cannot go one and one back and forth on these win-loss, win-loss records, all right? San Francisco is going to be the toughest competition we are going to face all year. Yes, we got to play the Patriots twice, but they do no longer have Tom Brady. Their wide receiver core is not that great either, and their defense is not what it once was. I think that we should be able to handle the Patriots. Buffalo Bills, their defense isn't that solid, but they do have Josh. Josh Allen has got a cannon of an arm, but no running, no run attack really there. And then you got the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, they got Tua, but they're playing with Fitzpatrick at the start of the season. Maybe they'll switch it as the year goes in. But I do not think Miami is that big of a threat either. We definitely should win this division as this one goes out wide to Mims. Mims jumps up, and is he not able to hold on to the ball? Drops that one. Oh, he grabbed it. Okay, okay, he grabbed it. I don't know how he grabbed it because I saw the ball in between his legs. I guess he held on to it between his legs. They're going to hand it off to Bell, who's going to get hit in the backfield for a loss of one yard. Yikes, 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 yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Bell, man, you got to get things going against these Colts. The Colts defense is going to be the easiest defense we probably play. Ah, that's not that's not true. Oh god damn it. And there goes Darnold getting sacked in the backfield by Moore the second for an 8-yard sack that's bringing it up third and 19. Man, these Colts this Colts defense really breaking through the line and getting some pressure early on to Sam Darnold. They Darnold doesn't handle pressure well. He does not. All right, last, last week against the 49ers, they were able to get some early sacks, get some pressure, constant pressure, always hitting them after the play, and they walked away with a win. All right, Hike, come on. 19 yards, going deep, up the middle, wide open was that receiver to left, but he threw it to Mims, his top receiver, unable to hold on to that one, though, as now we are gonna have to punt it away to Indianapolis and we punt it all the way down to their 23 yard line not the greatest punt in the world not the greatest punt in the world but it's it's going to have to do both teams on their first drive get have to go out on a punt as I'm hoping that we're able to stop them here and keep them punting again I don't want them to get the first score I'd rather us get the first score and the last score now we bring this guy down after a gain of 10. That's going to bring up second in inches. Only got to get an inch to really get that first down. Can we put him down in the backfield? Hands it off to Marlon Mack. He's going to pick up about three yards there. Force it, moving the chains and moving it to a first down. Bill Rivers going to the shotgun. Going to hand it off to Mims. I mean, uh, Marlon Mack again. Another gain of three yards, second and seven now for these Colts. Clay Matthews gets the tackle there. We're pretty settled on the sideline. Adam Gase pretty settled. No real emotion there, just kind of wandering the sideline. Going to hand it off to Marlon Mack again, who's going to run right into our defensive line, picking up two, and that's going to bring up third and five. Adam Gase pretty happy with that one. I'm be pretty happy with that one, too. If we can keep their run attack down to two, three yards per game, I'm fine with that. I'm perfectly fine. San Francisco beating the Giants 38-3. to San Francisco starting off the season 3-0. and oh. My God, those Giants had no chance, man, no chance. As now we're gonna put pressure on Rivers, but finds it wide open, wide receiver there, shaking off a couple tackles, trying to keep his feet moving, but finally gets brought down. There. That was Paris Campbell with the reception, wide open. I don't know where the coverage was. Look at how wide open this guy was. Whoop. No one within five yards of him. Five, ten yards. He had all the room in the world to do whatever he wanted. And if he would have broke free there, 
Man, that would have been a touchdown. Luckily, our guys were able to hold on to it as Marlon Mack gets the ball again. Big pick up there, but there is a flag on the field. Let's see what it is. Illegal block in the back by Paris Campbell after picking up the huge first down. They get an illegal block in the back. That is going to be first and six now. Phillip Rivers hands it off to Mack, who goes out wide again, but tackled for about a two-yard or one-yard gain. For it's now second and five at the end of the first quarter. 0-0 zero, zero is the score. So this is the first game where at the end of the first quarter, there has been no touchdowns on either side of the ball. Very defensive-style game here. Not something I think is, you know, entertaining. But it's going to have to do this kind of football. Football does do this. There is times at the end of the first quarter that no one scores. It's now third in inches. If we can hold them off here, we keep them from getting any points on the scoreboard. But they're going to run it off to Mac, who's going to run it right up the middle. Shakes off one tackle and picks up another 10 yards there. It is now moving those chains. First and 10, and they are in field goal position within our 25 yard line, not quite in our red zone yet, but they are getting there and they're moving the ball quite well. Marlon Mack, I was just talking trash about how I don't think they're gonna be able to run the ball that effective. And I think they're gonna pass it a lot more. And here they are just handing it off to Mack and Mack is running all over us. Phillip Rivers getting the ball here. Drops back, quick pass out to his tight end, Jax Doyle. And he gets brought down after a gain of three yards there. Bill Rivers really quick on these releases, not really spending too much time in the pocket. Just he wants to put, drop back one, two, then release. He doesn't want to sit back, allow time for anyone to get to him or allow time for his receivers to really move downfield. He wants nice, quick, short passes here. They're going to go for the screen pass. And that's going to be a first down, and he's still going. And that's a hit stick. Oh, man, if we could have gotten the fumble. That's C.J. Mosley with a huge hit on Mack there. Mack, two receptions for 25 yards. And that's another first down. They are now in the four-yard line. They are on the four-yard line, boys. Please, please just allow them to get a field goal at this point. Maybe an interception, fumble, make them fumble. It would be nice. Let's see what we're able to do here. Just don't allow them to score a touchdown, please. I think they're going to be looking for T.Y. Hillen on the side there. And now they're going to hand it off to Mack, who's just going to walk right in, untouched, for a rushing touchdown as the Colts are going to go up 6 to nothing and get the first score about a little, little over half, a little under half uh, way through this second quarter here. Mack just walking an untouched look. Jenkins almost gets to him, but it's too late. Mack already in the backfield in the end zone. Rivers happy about that one. Looking like he's having a better career here, or at least a better record than he was with the Chargers. Looking like a new Phillip Rivers kick is up, and the extra point is good as the Colts are now up seven to nothing on the New York Jets. Uh, not the greatest, not the greatest first half right now. I mean, we only got the ball once, but it appears that these Jets are coming out slow and sluggish. They we're returning it here. Get past the 25, please, and we only get up to the 25. Tavon Austin, you are very lucky that uh, that John Ross got traded over to the Washington Football Team. He was a really hot prospect that I was really interested in grabbing, and Tavon Austin would have been the guy out. But, I mean, I'm fine with Austin. I like Tavon Austin. I'm, I'm surprised no team in real life has signed him yet. As we're just going to hand it off to Bell. Bell, all the room in the world, takes a move to the center. He, he went out wide. We had two blocks out wide. He could have just rushed it all the way down the field, but instead cuts to the middle where two Colts linebackers and safeties were waiting for him. But still, huge game by Bell there. Huge, huge game. Look at that. Just move out right, go right around 15, all the room in the world, and that would have been an easy touch down. 
But you know, what can you do? You know, we're not on the field. We don't know what he sees. Maybe he didn't think that was open play action there. Sam Darnold going out wide. Did he keep his feet in bounds? Did he keep his feet in bounds there? I don't think he did. That's going to bring up second and 10. God damn it. God damn it. That was almost a good play. He could have kept his feet in there. I think it would have been good. Or was it? Did he get it? I can't tell. I got the recording thing in the top left. It's blocking uh, the first downs and everything. I don't think he got it. Uh, but nice little quick throw down to Le'Veon Bell here. It's either second and four or third and four. I, I can't see. Hopefully it's second and four so we can have one more chance if this doesn't work. Darnold looking for someone. No one getting pressured and brought down in the backfield back at our 36-yard line. Well, I guess I'm going to find out here if we do wind up punting it away if it was a fourth down. Clock's not moving, though, so that's kind of uh, worrying me. But Sam Darnold sacked, second time getting sacked here. Last time we had to punt it due to the sack. Sacking is back at the 19, and yep, it was fourth down. Is we're now going to have to punt it away again, giving the Colts a chance to go up two scores. Oh, yikes, boys. Yikes. That's not what you want to see. All right, we don't want to go down by two scores. All right, we got to stop them here. If they go up by two scores, it is going to be a long, rough day. I don't think Phillip Rivers is ever going to let us uh, get that lead again or even tie it. If they get if they march down this field and score we got 337 here on the clock just kill some clock maybe or get the ball back nice little throw to ty hill and shakes off one huge tackle and it is brought down after a gain of seven sam Darnold no longer joking yelling at his wide receivers and tight tight ends and running back saying hey guys we gotta get this going all right let's get pumped up i want to see more more action. I want to see you guys care a little bit more. Get some more momentum. Let's go out there next time. Score a touchdown and get this thing going. As we're going to hand it off to Mac there. Gets hit for a gain of maybe one yard. Bring up third and two. Two minutes, 35 seconds left on the clock. Making an adjustment is Rivers now. Going to hand it off to Mac, and Mac is going to get the first down barely by one yard, but nonetheless still picks it up. Clock is ticking, and we're about to get to the two-minute warning as now they are on their 37-yard line with first and 10. God damn it, boys. God damn it. We need, we need some momentum. We need some momentum. We have nothing. Nothing on offense right now is working for us. It is bad. It is bad. Maybe we should just hand the ball off more to Le'Veon Bell, let him rush it, instead of trying to, you know, force some throws. First and 10, 208 left in the clock. I think they're going to hike it before the two-minute warning. And they are. They're going to play action it as we're trying to break through. Unable. Clay Matthews getting on Rivers, and Rivers just barely able to get out. Of, and that is oh, a huge pickup. He gets throws it right before getting leveled by our, guy, our defensive tackle coming on in. His receiver cuts on back and he's able to find it right in between the gaps in the zone coverage. Rivers, oh, that's a pick. That's a pick, guys. You gotta stop trying to swat it and try to intercept it. CJ Mosley, you know better than that. That should have been a pick and you know it. Nice little quick slant out to T.Y. Hilton. 10 for 14, 119 yards, still moving the chains. A minute 40 left on the clock, and they're marching right down this field. It looks like these Colts are going to get another scoring opportunity. I think that they might walk away with another touchdown before the end of this game. They still do have three timeouts left. Oh, God, it's going to be a rough, long day. He throws it right up the middle to Campbell, who... Gets down to the one yard line. Not able to pick that touchdown. Unfortunate for him. It's probably a little hurt, but now we're probably just going to see them hand it off to Marlon Mack, who's just going to rush right on up the middle to get that touchdown. Let's see what they're going to do here. A minute 10 left in this game. And yep, right up the middle to Mack. But we're able to stop them. That's what I like to see, boys. Bend, but do not break. The Colts are going to use their first timeout now. It's now going to be second and goal on our one yard line, but it's the back part of our yard line. 
Philip Rivers now backing up. Still think it's just going to be uh, run right up the middle to Mack. And it is, and Mack is going to get in for his second rushing touchdown of the game. God damn it, boys. What is going on? What is what is up with this Philip Rivers marching down the field? He looks like he's Tom Brady out there. You know, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, I don't know, whatever you think the top QB in the league is. He's, he's marching down the field, picking apart this Jets defense. And we're just not playing the way that I know we can. Our offense is staggering. Our defense isn't breaking through the line at all. We can't get any pressure on Rivers. What is going on, boys? The balls that we should be intercepting, we're just swatting away. Opportunities are slipping through our fingers, and we definitely need to have a talk. Once halftime starts, we need to have a talk. We got a minute to march down this field and at least get a field goal. All right, we got we got to march down this field and get at least a field goal. With a minute, we got 59 seconds, pretty much a minute to march down, get a field goal, and I'll be happy. But that means at the start of the second half, we need to score a touchdown. We need to score a touchdown to start off the second half. Otherwise, this game, just like the San Francisco game, is going to get away from us and we are going to lose. Come on, Darnold, play the way I know you can. Darnold dropping back, going out, and that is swatted away by the free safety for the Colts. God damn it, Crowder couldn't hold on to it there. Darnold now second and 10. Go up the middle. And is that gonna be a first down? I do not think so. I think it's gonna bring up third and inches. Yep, it is third and inches. Dunzel Mims, second reception of the day there. Darnold gonna drop back. Got a little pressure there. And he's just gonna throw this ball away. Now we're gonna give the Colts another goddamn opportunity to score and go up by three. It is fourth and in inches, boys. Do you not know how easy it is to get an inch in this goddamn game? As there is a flag here on the play. Come on, to give that, give us the first down. Give us the first down because of that. First down because of that. Oh no, it's just gonna move them back 10 yards. They are now on their nine yard line. Gives me a little bit more confidence. They're on their nine line. I don't think they're gonna be able to march that far up. Jack Doyle able to pick up that one timeout by the Colts. Got one timeout left, about 35 seconds left on the clock. If Phillip Rivers is able to march down this goddamn field in 30 seconds and give them more points, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it. I'm going to have to fix this defense. C.J. Mosley tackles down Marlon Mack there. 25 seconds, and that should do it. We should just, we should just be able to wind down the clock here. I think they're just going to rush out the clock, go into halftime, and we need to talk to these guys. We have no points on the scoreboard going into the second half. We're, we're down by two scores. We need our defense in the second half to come out swinging, get some interceptions, maybe get a pick six, cause a fumble. And we need our offense to go down and at least score a touchdown to start this thing off. It is now third and six, seven seconds left on the clock. Even if we get the ball back here, I don't, unless we get a huge return, even then the clock starts as soon as we touch the ball. We're in, we're in trouble. We're in trouble here. Basically what we need to hope here is we stop him here, call timeout, and we get a kick return for a touchdown. Marlon Mack dives forward. We are going to call a timeout. Three seconds left on the clock. Come on, return this. Return it to the house, Austin. Come on, Austin. Let's go, let's go. Come on. I signed you for this specific purpose. There is no time on the clock. And no one blocked for Austin, so he just gets leveled all the way back. And that's going to do it at the end of the set. Uh, it's the end of the first half. Darnold upset. Gase upset. Everyone's upset. I know that we can play better. You played better against the Buffalo Bills, boys. Look at that. 24 passing yards, 17 rushing. That is horrendous. 
taking a look around the league now. Jacksonville at Miami. And Miami wins 21-14, giving him a 2-1. Two and one. And Tua Tagovailoa finally getting the start over Ryan Fitzpatrick and leading him to a victory. New York Giants at San Francisco. Well, that's uh, that's in New York. And San Francisco, like we said earlier, won 38-3. Jimmy Garoppolo having himself a day showing that he can pass the ball. Daniel Jones, three interceptions, really causing the Giants to lose there. Las Vegas at New England. And New England walks away with the victory. Cam Newton, two touchdowns, one interception. Derek Carr unable to get a single touchdown. But... Josh Jacobs was a ja, da, da. Jacobs was able to get two rushing touchdowns. Yeah, it's just it's just a bad game right now for these Jets. We need to come out swinging. Here we go. Start things off right. It's a fresh game, boys. Fresh game. We can still win this. All right, we can still win this. Tavon Austin rushing up the middle, runs right into the guys. Right at the 24-yard line. That's perfectly fine. That's right around where we would be anyways. Buffalo Bills beat the Los Angeles Rams 25-3. Yikes. God damn it, boys. Come on. We need to get some offense here, Darnold. We need to get some kind of offense. Force it. Force this offense to happen. Play action over to Le'Veon Bell, and there is a probably a holding call on us there. Yes, it is, and that's going to push us back. Alex Lewis getting the holding there is now first and 20. Oh, God, this that is not a good start. Play action. Looking for someone. Darnold going deep. And he finds his man, Mims, who's going to pick up the first down. There we go, Denzel Mims. Really reliable receiver there, and he always will be. That's why we drafted him in the second round. And by we, I mean the former management of the Jets before we took over. But he's breaking out. Denzel Mims having himself quite the season right now. And I think he's going to continue to do it. Three receptions for 43 yards. Sam Darnold just needs to realize he is not the only receiver out there. He does need to share the ball. There are going to be other receivers open, but right now Denzel Mims looks to be the only one really creating space between himself and other defenders. Sam Darnold needs to keep on moving right down the field, nice and quick, quick pace. Going to hand it off to Bell, who's going to shake off one tackle and bit brought down after a gain of six yards there, I believe. No, it's going to be five, second and five now. On the 40-yard line, Darnold going to look to find something here. Drops back, and he throws it to, a, to Hernan, who runs backwards after receiving that ball. Moving us back to third and 11. I'm pretty sure that ball was not intended for him. Yeah, I, that ball was intended for uh, Denzel Mims, who was wide open on the sideline. But Hernan jumped up, grabbed it, and lost six yards on that grab. I'm proud of you, but it does not matter. Le'Veon Bell is going to come out and pick up the first down for us. Hernan, we need to have a talk after this game, all right? I will put in Ryan Griffin over you. I do not care. If you're going to keep playing like that, Hernan, you at, if you keep playing like that and you cause us to get put in these bad situations, I will pull you and I will put Ryan Griffin over you. I want wins. I don't care who plays. I just want wins. Luckily, Le'Veon Bell was able to bail us out of that one. Darnold dropping back, looking for someone. Goes out wide to his receiver, Crowder. Who's going to pick up about five yards there, second and five now. That's Crowder's first reception on the day. As we're now going to see Darnold's just take over this game. I don't think we're going to see too many rushing attempts. Yep, over to Mims, just too high of a pass, not accurate. God damn it. Stop. God, whatever. It was, it was just not accurate. God damn it. God damn it. Come on. Screw it. 
Screen pass, and he doesn't get off in time. Le'Veon Bell looking to block instead of going over for the screen. As now we're gonna have to put it away, and now we have been sacked three times. We have been sacked three times in this game, each time causing us to punt. Every drive we have been sacked at least once. Yep, yep, mm -hmm. We just keep putting ourselves and digging ourselves a deeper and deeper hole. I don't want to say this game's over, but uh, I have a really sneaky suspicion that it may be over, especially after a awful punt by like that. Man, even our punter is having an awful game. These Colts were supposed to be a pretty decent team, yeah, but they are not supposed to be demolishing us like this. They are picking us apart. Passing, rushing, defensively, just completely picking us apart. It's like they have our playbook, or they're 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 able to just know what calls we're playing. We're calling. Do they know what we're calling? Or something? Like, uh, are they in our headsets? Are they cheating? Do I have to go to Roger Goodell and, and start an investigation for Colts cheating? Being able to listen in on what I'm calling? I don't, I don't know. I do not know. I think that first win against the Buffalo Bills might have just caused these Jets to get too cocky and or, or too complacent. And it, it's causing us to play awful. There's going to have to be changes going into going into next week. There might need to be some changes. I might need to send some faces out of this place. And I will do it. I will make some trades. I will move players around. I do not care. I see there's available players on the training block. I will make moves if you guys continue for the remainder of this game to play awful. If, especially if we get shut out, I am going to make moves. Philip Rivers throwing out wide to Mims. Mims almost picking up another first down. Every time Philip Rivers throws the ball, it's a first down. Like, what is going on here? Ten yards on the pickup. All right, T.Y. Hillen going right around and play and moving in motion. Tries to throw it over to Campbell. Campbell can't hold on to it and drops the ball. Darnold, you shut the fuck up. You don't yell at everyone else. This is on you, too. Understand that you're getting sacked and it might suck, but Darnold, you need to, I don't know, run the ball, find a fucking other receiver other than Denzel Mims. I don't, I don't know, but you need, you need to do something there. As whole, oh, were we able to stop him? We were. We were able to stop him finally. Finally, fucking C.J. Mosley, nine tackles on the day, nine tackles for him. I'm glad someone on the defensive side of the ball is is doing something. I'm glad that someone on the defensive side of the ball is doing something. God damn. God damn it, boys. This is just, this is, this is really irritating. I, I know this team is better than what it was. I've seen it, and they're going to go for it. I don't know. Maybe it's third in inches. But it looks like they're going to go for it, and they're going to do easily pick up the first down. If that was fourth and inches, and I go into this recording, and I see that that was fourth and inches, I'm going to lose my fucking mind, because anytime we have fourth and inches, we never go for it. We had a chance. We are down by two scores, and there was like 30-something seconds left, and we didn't even fucking go for it. Come on, boys. Get some goddamn pressure on the quarterback. Huge pickup there. By Pascal, was that? Was that Pascal? I don't know. Yep, it was Pascal. Yep. Indianapolis now over 200 yards today. And this de this defense, Jesus Christ. The Jets defense, that's supposed to be our cornerstone. I Like, our offense is supposed to be bad. I said it was going to be bad. Looking at it on paper, it's bad. Our defense is not bad. We have a, we have good players on our defense. Get a fumble. God. Ah, Jordan Jenkins able to get the sack there for minus one yards. It is now second and 11. Less than 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. If the Colts score here, it is just about over. It, it will literally be just about over if these Colts walked right on in here and score.
They will go up by three scores with one quarter remaining. And knowing how our defense is, I'm ex I, I would not be surprised if they score here. Yep, play by Hilton there. And he picks up about eight yards, I think. I think it was eight yards, it was second and 11. And I think it was eight yards there on that reception, able to pass it nice and easy to TY. I mean, it probably is nice to have at least one number one receiver. Soon enough, these Colts are just going to put in their backup. It's now third and three here. Rivers dropping back, looking for someone. Right up the middle, and that's a first down. At the end of the quarter, they are now on our one-yard line. I don't even think we've been past their fucking 50. I don't even think we've been past the 50-yard line. Well, we might not have even been past our own 40-yard line. This Colts defense that I made fun of is fucking destroying us. And this Colts offense that I said I think we can handle is fucking destroying us. Like, look, zero, zero, zero. We are going to get shut out by the Indianapolis Colts. Are you fucking kidding me? That is absolutely ridiculous. There you go. Fullback loses three yards there. Jordan Jenkins with the tackle there. Yeah, you guys get hype on the sideline. You all fucking suck. All right. Some of you will not be with us next week. Some of you probably will not be with us next week. I will go into free agency. I will trade some players. All right, there's still talent left in free agency. And there's a lot of players on the trading block that I, I have some high interest in. As they're going to hold it off to fucking Marlon Mack again, who gets his third rushing touchdown of the week. Congratulations to him. Uh, Marlon Mack, three touchdowns on the day. Just fucking uh, running up the score on us. You know, I, I wish... I wish I knew what scoring was like, but it's been two weeks since we really uh, have done anything on offense. Yeah, last week we, we scored, I think, a touchdown, maybe two touchdowns, but uh, feels like a lot longer. Feels like a lot longer since we've, uh, we've done anything. Yeah, feels like a lot longer. Oh, okie dokie. So, that was awful. Brutal. It's okay. It's okay. Let's just keep let's keep things moving, right? Keep this let's keep this thing moving. There is a flag there. I'm going to guess it's a block in the back by us. Yep. That's the holding receiving team. Move us back. 10 yards. We can't even fucking catch a break in the goddamn penalty department. Holy shit. Quick slant there, nice move. Denzel Mims picking up about 12 yards there. Not even a fucking 100 yards yet in total offense, and we're in the fourth quarter. Ridiculous. Darnold's almost fumbled twice now, and he's going to get brought down for a sack. There we go. That is now the fourth sack on the game. That means that we are going to punt this ball away. Looking at how history happens, when we get sacked, we get punts. Yep. Le'Veon Bell able to pick up about six there, but he is a little closer. Still third and 14. Darnold's not going to pick it up here, and he is going to cause us to punt it away. Looking for someone deep. Oh, he finds someone. Did we pick up the first down? Oh, we did. Oh, Le'Veon Bell picking up the first down. Oh, I had no faith that we are. Maybe if I have no faith in our offense, our offense might do something. Let's just see. Darnold, you fucking suck. All right, you're, you will not go down and score a touchdown. You will not do it. You will not do it, Darnold. I swear to you, you will not go down and score this touchdown. Do not do it. You piece of shit. Do not do it. Okay? Do not march down this field and score a touchdown. 
Loss of one yard there, third and six. Loss of a yard on the play. Uh, God damn it. Oh my God. Darnold, don't do it. All right, screen. All right, we pick up three there. Bring up fourth and three. And I, I'm anticipating a punt. I'm anticipating a punt. Even though this is supposed to be a smarter uh, AI this game that is supposed to, you know, have better play calling and all that. Better play recognition. Better movement for players. More realism. Oh, we're going to go for it. But we wouldn't go for it, you know, with 30 seconds left and we were on the inch line. Nice little quick throw and it is dropped by Bell. And now we're giving it back to Indianapolis on our 43 yard line. Uh, we're gonna get shut out in Indianapolis and you are all gonna pay the price. You're all gonna pay the price. There's gonna be a lot of new faces on this team uh, this week actually. After this game I'm picking up the phone and I'm shipping a lot of you dumb motherfuckers out of here. I promise you. I promise you. I'm gonna hand it off to Marlon Mack here, who's your new fall forward for a pickup of about five yards, four yards there. My bad, four yards. Second and six. He only rushed for 22 this week. Hanging off to Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack just rushes right up the middle. Was he able to pick up the first down? No, he wasn't third in inches, but it's okay because they're just going to hand it right back off to him as they keep killing this clock. Here it is. First down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, first down. Uh, I don't know what it, I don't know. Do we need to change up the defense? Do we need to change up the offense? Is it the playbook? Is it the scheme? I mean... I've left it all on default. I can't mess with the scheme unless I fire the coach. And then we just gotta roll with the scheme that the other coach has. And the same and the playbook that that coach has too. So I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys want from me uh, here. Alright, uh, so here we are. Just gonna keep hitting it to Mac. Mac had a wide open gap again. Seems like we suck with the run stop, even though the scheme for our fucking linebackers and uh, our line is supposed to be run stop. Okay. Got a minute left in this game. Just a little mi a minute left to torture. Marlon Mack, just big 18 yard pickup down to our 10 yard line. First and 10 with a minute left. All right, so basically what I'm getting out of this is Marlon Mack will have four touchdowns by the end of the game. He's gonna have four touchdowns on us by the end of this game, and we're gonna get shut out. I have a lot of faith in you guys, and you guys are really causing me to doubt my faith in all of you. Rivers looking to pass, instead goes to the back of the end zone, and that's a passing touchdown to T.Y. Hilton. Causing the score to now be 27 to nothing, and with 30 seconds left on the clock, and zero, zero chance of winning. Oh, we're going to get a booth review. Does it matter, NFL? Does it really matter? Is this booth review important at all? Okay. Like, he stepped out of bounds there, but does it really fucking matter? There's 30 seconds left in the game. I would just tell him to fucking give him the touchdown. I do not care. This game's embarrassing. Yeah, and it's upheld, even though he stepped out of bounds. He didn't even have two feet in bounds. Great game, EA. Great game. You know, I, under I understand that I'm losing. I'm probably being a sore loser or whatever. But seriously, some of the things here I can blame on EA. Like, the logic between the AI 
Fucking dumb as shit. That play right there. T.Y. Hillen did step out of bounds. Should have been brought back, but no. No. Why would we do that? Pass interference is still bullshit. There is no pass interference call. Even though there's a lot of plays. Fucking Chris Hurden going to fucking leap and Superman up, even though we got a wide open receiver downfield, causing us to lose six yards and put us in a bad predicament. You know, just a lot of, you know, according to EA, smarter AI. Smarter AI. So if this is smarter AI, what the fuck do they consider dumb AI? Incomplete. Like that's gotta be like Xavier Rhodes on the cover. Pop Warner football. <laughs> like little kids just running around having no idea what they're doing type football. Like that's the only that's the only thing I can I can assume. Is if this is smart AI, then what? What the fuck do they consider dumb AI? Chucking it down the field. Why open is Chris Hogan? And we're not going to get shut out. Oh, you know, it's a little too late for a fucking touchdown. But I'm glad you guys decided, you know, we got 10 seconds left in this game. Let's finally decide to make something happen. I'm happy that with fucking less than 10 seconds left, you guys decide, hey, maybe we should put up some kind of points. Maybe we should cause some kind of opening. Maybe try to get open. Sam Darnold finally throws it to a, you know, the right guy. I don't, Brett doesn't get sacked. Our line point. holds up, you know, I mean. God damn, this was a fucking horrific game. I mean, at least we got a touchdown, I guess. But like, it's over. The game is over. Yeah, just can we just run out the like can we just go up to the refs and be like yo just run the clock just run the clock I mean we're gonna see oh my god we can't even bring down a fucking kick returner without three guys having to tackle him don't even call a timeout please AI do not call a goddamn timeout there is no possible way for you to be able to win do not call a goddamn timeout thank you as this is gonna be the end of the game Final score, 28-7. to Indianapolis Colts as they absolutely spank us right in the ass. Marlon Mack, three touchdowns on the day. And Phillip Rivers passing for, I think, over 300 yards. I think. I think it was over 300 yards. I know it's over 200. Defense got picked apart. And we're going to make some moves that you guys are going to see here in a second after we go and look. And what our team did today. CJ Mosley, fucking monster. CJ Mosley did everything in his goddamn power to do. He Before the first half alone, CJ Mosley was at nine tackles. Let's take a look. So Sam Darnold, eight for 26, 191 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. Rushing, I mean, you can't blame it on Bell. We were down the entire game, forced to pass. Four rushes for 22 yards. Receiving, Chris Hogan, run reception for 71 and a touchdown. Bell, 9 for 56. Mims, 4 for 55. James Crowder, 1 for 5. And Christopher Hurden, uh, the fourth, 3 for 4. Blocking, Alex Lewis allowed one. And Chuma and Doga allowed one. Defensively, 12 solo tackles for C.J. Mosley. A total of 15 tackles in total. Tackle for loss, Jordan Jenkins got two, Al Woods got one, and Marcus May had one. Interceptions, you know, we had opportunities, but our defense decides to swat it away instead of, you know, going for it. Jordan Jenkins was able to get the lone sack of the day, kicking, punting, kick return, and punch return. Now let's get into revamping this team because I'm a little pissed off and I think after getting absolutely demolished and got anally penetrated very rudely and with no consent, we need to, sh re we need to, we need to address some needs.
All right, so the first trade that we're going to make is over to the Arizona Cardinals for Galliard, the left guard, and we're moving out our center, Harrison. Not awful. Uh, Harrison's 29, one-year contract. He's our backup center. We need, and I'm going to convert uh, Galliard over to right tackle. Uh, I'm hoping that he can take up that mail. Maybe I'll move someone else to right tackle and move him over to over to one of the guards. I'm I'm not 100% sure what I want to do, but I needed to bolster up that right uh, that right tackle side. I need to do something. Galliard was the top lineback line uh, O line option available on the trading block. I'm pulling the trigger. I'm doing this. We got one more trade. One more, and this is for a tight end because uh, Hernan. As much as Hernan has been helpful uh, throughout the season, last game pissed me off. And I am going to trade over with the Los Angeles Rams. You guys might have seen him got moved uh, in other franchise modes. And it's going to be uh, Gerald Everett. He's 26, star potential. Uh, they need a middle linebacker. They need a center. Defense tackle, left guard, QB. Uh, so when I find out what I'm going to trade them for Gerald Everett, I will show you guys. And there we go, boys. I have figured out the Everett trade. So we're going to be sending back the middle linebacker on Huasor and a fifth round pick. For those of you guys who think, you know, this, this one might not be as realistic. Believe me. All right, let's go. I just want to go. I just want you guys to see this Rams uh, linebacking position. All right. This is why this is realistic. They have no one to play linebacker. Okay, no one. Anawasser is going to be their number one middle linebacker. Number one middle linebacker. So basically what they did is they traded for their number one middle linebacker and got a pick, which they need. The Rams need picks. And along with it, they got rid of a tight end that they have been looking to ship out. So there was that move. I'm going to dip into free agency, see if anything's there. If not, we might be in, we might be in trouble. Uh, if, if nothing else pops up, we'll go into, I'll just jump right on into, uh, the weekly award. All right. So after we were able to trade for Gerald Everett, we wind up signing him for four years at $25.2 million over to Avery Williams. Let's see if we're able to negotiate a contract for him. Four years, a little steep. I'd rather have a two year deal with you if possible. Uh, everything I'm about this offer Needs improvement. All right, buddy. All right. Uh, Pierre Desir, he only wants a one-year contract. I'm perfectly fine with only paying him for one season. That offer is perfect. Also, we were able to extend him. Marcus May, the strong safety four-year contract. That is perfectly sound with me. Awesome. We signed Marcus May to a four-year deal. And then Brian Poole wants a three-year deal. Again, perfectly fine offering him that. Uh, this is exactly what I want. Awesome. Welcome to the team again, Marcus May. So three years for May, four years for uh, uh, four years for May, three years for Pool, one year for Desir. Williams wants us to keep negotiating with him, and Gerald Everett. We wound up signing him for four years after trading for him as well. Going into around the league transactions, let's see what has happened. So going over to signings, week number four, uh, tight end for the tight end gets signed by the Rams uh, after trading away a tight end. An interesting predicament there. Uh, not that many. So Rams sign a tight end. Ravens sign le uh, left outside linebacker. Left guard goes to the Cardinals. Uh, middle linebacker goes to the Packers. And then the Detroit Lions wind up signing a defensive tackle uh re-signees let's take a look around the league see who's been being re-signed free safety and justin simmons gets re-signed all right brandon mcmanus gets re-signed there as well oliver vernon all right carl joseph anyone else chris godwin re-signs uh patrick peterson signs a one-year deal buddha baker uh kenyon drake keenan allen hunter henry uh ryan kelly okay 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 uh, Yushchak, Richard Sherman, 
Uh, Leonard Williams, Joe Mixon. All right, so a lot of Cooper Cup, uh, Jalen Ramsey, a lot of big name guys. Brandon Sheriff, oh, Ronald Darby as well, Corey Davis, Penny Stills. Rob Gronkowski signs a four-year deal as well. T.Y. Illen signs an extension last week. Same with Marlon Mack. Dak Prescott as well for a five-year deal. Uh, Matt Breida resigns. Todd Gurley resigns. Leonard Fournette resigned. Mar Evan Jones Jr. resigned. Kenny Dolliday resigned. Damn. Curtis Samuel resigned. A lot of resignings. Big names. Juju Smith Suster uh, and Allen Robinson as well. Looking around, who's been getting traded? Uh, let's take a look. The Ravens trade a seventh. All right, so the Ravens get a third, a sixth, and a seventh. And the Patriots wind up picking up uh, Tyus Bozer, left outside linebacker. Uh, the Rams picked up, obviously, for our trade, our trade. And then we just get down uh, into that. That trade over there. Releases. No one. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, Dante Dayan, Daniel Kilblor, Reggie Gilbert, Ty Summers, Nick Williams, uh, Brett Quavel, Dante Olsen. Uh, oh, wait. We're getting into week number three. Never mind. That is not important at all. So let's go take a look. See who got the three stars of the week. Uh, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. I'll go over to awards. I'm going to guess Marlon Mack. Yeah, Marlon Mack, AFC Offensive Player of the Week, 21 carries, 71 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns, five reception for 50 yards. Uh, Joseph for the Tennessee Titans, Titans, 11 tackles, one interception. NFC Defensive Player goes to Reuben Foster, 16 tackles. And for the NFC, Kenyon Drake, 10 carries, 95 yards, two rushing touchdowns, and one reception for 15 yards for him. So running backs lead the way, week number three. And like I said before, I am going to go and talk to you guys about why I think the, rem the next couple weeks should be pretty easy for us. So looking at our schedule as it is, we're, we're going up against the Broncos. Broncos obviously have, you know, Vaughn Miller and whatnot. Their defense is pretty nasty. They did just get Juju, uh, Jerry Judy. But I think the Broncos are still kind of a little bit behind the Jets, at least I'm hoping. And we should be able to pull off an upset victory there or at least get a victory there. Cardinals, really good. This could be a really tough matchup. Cardinals could just wind up kicking our butt, but I'm expecting a win here as well. Chargers rebuilding. They're rebuilding. However, Justin Herbert is playing fantastic in the simulation, so we might wind up losing there as well. Bills, we beat them earlier. I believe we can. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs, I think we're going to pull off a... I, don't, I think we're going to get our ass kicked there. Patriots, I'm expecting a W. Dolphins, I'm expecting a Dolph W. Dolphins again, W. Raiders, W. Seahawks, L. Rams, Rams, I'm going to expect an L. Browns, an L. And Patriots, a W. So I think we still might be able to reach that seven-minute mark, but I am not 100% sure. Now let's take a look at what some of these guys want to talk about going into week number four. So we got a frustrated receiver. Let's go and talk to him. Uh, Jameson Crowder, coach. It's been quiet for me out there on the field, and I normally wouldn't complain. But when I'm not catching passes, I don't feel like I'm helping the team. So, can you get me more involved in the offense this week? Jamison, you're our number one receiver. Number one. If you cannot do it on your own, then you will not get it. All right? I'm not going to pad your stats. Yeah, I guess I understand. I'm just disappointed that I can't do more to help the team to win. I understand, man. Look, I'm going to I'm trying to increase the overall uh, underutilized wide receiver. Jamison Crowder is unhappy with how you're using him. How can you incorporate him into your game plan? Dude, he's the number one wide receiver. I don't know what he wants from me. Our offensive coordinator wants to talk to us. All right. So Thursday night game this week, which means we're on sh we're on a short week. Going to be hard to install a full game plan and give the team time to recuperate. Tough choices. Do you want the team mentally prepared and, but tired or well-rested but less prepared? No. No. We need to be fucking prepared, all right? I want to be ready for the Broncos this week. The team is going to have, uh, have to give up some of our normal uh, repercussion time in order to do that. I agree. Uh, it's going to hit the players hard to keep working despite the loss last week. But it's what the team needs right now. It really is. One morale for the entire team. I don't give a 
fuck, you guys sucked last game. I don't care what you want. You guys need to play a lot better. Uh, breakout player here, all right. Uh, Jordan Jenkins. Uh, coach, you've really let me play to my uh, instincts recently, and I can't thank you enough. Last week was one of the best performances I've had since college. If I can put together another game like that against the Broncos, I'll, it'll go a long way towards establishing me as a leader on this team. Uh, hold the Broncos to less than 250 total yards, or get Jordan Jenkins uh, one interception, force fumble, tackle for loss, or sack. I think he's going to do that. I think Jordan Jenkins is going to wind up jumping up a star trait. And then left, uh, yep, yep, this is going to be about Vaughn Miller, isn't it? Yep, coach, tell me we got a plan for Vaughn Miller this week. I've been losing sleep over this guy. He's a ferocious pass rusher and comes with everything on every play. Just absolutely plays his heart out. If we want to move the ball, we've got to figure out how to handle Vaughn Miller. Now, Vaughn Miller, I'm not too worried about him, to be completely honest with you. I'm going to go with slow him down. I, you can't really neutralize the guy. He will gain the backfield. He probably will wind up getting a sack against us. The best we can do is slow him a, uh, down. We can't afford to lose sight of him this week. You think we, we've got a handle on him, and all of a sudden, boom, he's jarred the, the ball loose, and he's inter or, uh, or he's intercepted a pass. We need to keep our, an eye open. We really do. B. Vaughn Miller's Bronco have one or fewer turnovers. I agree. I do think we're going to wind up turning the ball over. I will go into the scouts. I will go into the scout. Week 8 against the Chiefs, I will show you guys my scouting board, who I'm scouting and whatnot. I just want to keep it a secret at the moment. I am using a in-progress build, so it's not going to have a lot of these real prospects um, that are going to be in this next year's draft. But it has a good, a, a lot of the key players in my, in my opinion, especially in the quarterback department. We got most of the top quarterbacks in there. Uh, a few wide receivers, a lot of running backs. Offensively side of the ball, a lot of guys are in there. Defensive side of the ball, unfortunately, not so much. A couple guys, but not a lot. Uh, so next week, we're going to jump in back at home against the 2-in-1 Broncos. Hopefully, we can go back to 500. Oh, we're one and two against the Bills. I need we need a win. We need a win uh, this upcoming week against the Broncos. So until next time, guys, see you. Later.